Hello, everybody. So today's webinar is going to it's going to last an hour with a Q and A. So we should be done by, by three. If there are loads of questions, we might even extend it a bit. But let's get to that when we, when we get to the end. So as usual, this webinar is being recorded and it's going to be emailed to you alongside some additional resources. So I've put together some other stuff to go along with this. And we'll be sending that hopefully this week. Um, but if not, it'll be within the next seven days. Um, but yes, see, people are doing it already. Say hello in the chat. It's nice to see you all. Come on in. Um, and the closed captions are available as well. So if you need to use those, we've got the wonderful Kate, um, who is transcribing my words. So you can press the CC button at the bottom. And I've also got Andy with me today. So Andy's our website tech champion. And he's got a webinar next week, actually, about um, environmental websites and all of that. So please join him next week. Um, Andy's going to join me at the end for the Q&A. He's going to help uh, answer some of those questions. So we've got a lot to get through today. Um, but let's get going. <laughs> um, so this one is all about advanced configuration and custom reporting in Google Analytics 4. Now, originally, I had a lot more content to go into this. But in our practice session that we did a couple of weeks ago, we realized it was way too much information. It went too deep too soon. And based on your feedback in the um, registration forms, you told us the kind of stuff that you wanted out of this webinar. So what we've done is removed some of the, the more advanced, the, the more advanced, there is advanced stuff in there, but the even more advanced stuff is now moved over to a webinar on the 12th of July, which is all about using Google Tag Manager to customize and enhance the data available in Google Analytics 4. So the stuff that we're going to do today is all about the reporting side of the stuff and doing some customization in the interface. But to go even deeper, please join us on that next webinar as well. If you'd like to tag us on Twitter, say you're here, um, that'd be really nice. And do follow us on ace underscore DCN, so A-C-E underscore DCN. Um, it's nice to see you there. OK, so today's session. So the first the first two er er elements that we're going to do today is the first is about navigating the reporting interface. I've spoken to so many organizations and people working in the creative and cultural sector over the last 18 months getting to grips with, with GA4. And it's confusing. I struggled when I first started doing it. It took me ages to get used to what was going on. So first, the first bit is about navigating what's available there. The second bit is going to be about uh, building custom reports. So what, how, what and how you can do within the interface itself. So the, the first two is all about getting the data out of Gunatics 4. And the third and fourth steps that we're going to go through today is about talking about events, parameters, and conversions. And lastly, it's about configuring Gunatics 4 or GA4 to match your objectives. Now, what you're going to do and feel, I've kind of outlined in some emojis here. So we've got this one, which is like, ooh, very nice. That's where that bit of information is. That's what we're going to do in the first bit. The second is going to be like, ooh, I can actually make some custom reports. You're going to have a big smile on your face. When we get to the more advanced stuff, events, parameters, and conversions, it's going to be painful. I'm not going to lie to you. This bit is hard to get through. So um, just, just a bit bear that in mind when we go through this. And then um, the, the last bit is uh, about the you're going to, about matching up to your objectives. And that's going to make you really think about what, how, how and why you might want to use certain things in Guratix 4. So this is your emoji journey. Um, Please bear with us. We're here to help you as well. So if you're going to get stuck at any point of this, that's what we're here to do. If you're a creative and cultural organization or work within that sector in England, you can have free one-to-ones with us. And with GA4, it'll be with me. So please do book in. So as before we begin, I want to just shoot two different tools that I use quite regularly. Now, one is this, uh, which is a Chrome extension. And I think they've got a Firefox version as well. This is an analytics bugger and a debugger. Uh, Andy's going to put links to these in the chat for you. Um, this helps us identify what is going on with your website when it comes to analytics. And secondly, is this one, which is it's a, it's a, cheat, a cheat sheet for the dimensions and metrics available in Google Analytics 4. It's confusing when you're first going into this and looking at what is available data-wise. So looking at these websites, 
using the debugger helps understand what is happening and what the terminology of the stuff that is, is within Google Analytics 4. So in our first area, so this is the, the which, which emoji is this one? Big smile emoji, nice. We're going to talk about the actual interface of Google Analytics 4. So when we log in, you are presented with the home screen, and it's got some bits of information on there, quite confusing. But what you need to do is use the navigation on the left-hand side, and there are five options on there. Um, so the first is the home element. It gives some bits and bobs. And what we have is the overview and detail reports are available in the report section, and we're going to look at what those look like in a minute. Then we've got explorations um, for deeper analysis. So if you want to dig deeper into the data, that's in the explore section. So this is very, very different to what we've seen in the universal analytics, the old version of analytics, is that it's actually split to, for different bits, different sections. Um, so it's all not in one big list, as you might have saw in universal analytics. You actually have to go into different areas. And, and that's one of the confusing elements of this, is that you go into one, play, one place and you try to understand, um, try to look for the data that should exist, and it's not there. You might have to go to the other bit. And then we're going to look at a third option as well. The um, other option at the bottom of this is the administration element uh, part of the, uh, the interface. And that is where you can configure and then you can turn on and off integration options as well. So there's more stuff to do in the admin section. In the first two options we have there, you can't break anything. You can change things, but you can't break anything. In the bit at the bottom, the admin section, you can break things. So just be aware of that. So if you have recently created a GM4 account, um, you might have been presented with a list of options about how you are going to use it. This is a big, big question if you just create an account, you, you, you're very new to that. You might, have, you might have seen these. So as we go through these options, um, the, the interface that you will probably have if you've already had account um, is you can choose this bottom option, which is the get the baseline reports that you have here. If you select this option, you'll be presented with options on the list of reports like this. If you choose different options when you create an account, you will get different lists of options in here with reports. So again, this is another one of the confusing elements with Google Analytics 4 is that not everybody is seeing the same thing when they log in. And this makes um, some of the resources that are available and some of the guidance quite difficult to, to follow and navigate is that this actually changes quite a lot. But if you're presented with this, this is what each of these mean, these areas, and it might be what your report looks like. So first off, we have acquisition, which is about how did your users find you? We next have engagement, which is what are they doing on the website? You might have monetization on there. So what are they worth to you? How much, how much money are they purchasing through? And then we have the user demographics as well. So who are they? And then what technology are they using? So that sits within the different reports that we have here. So I'm just going to load up Google Analytics 4 for us. And this is our account. The Google, this is the Digital Quarter Network account. So this is our Google Analytics 4 account. If I go to the report section over here on the left, I'm presented with a list just like we've seen here. So exactly this is what we're seeing in our list. And I can go to acquisition. And I can look at the different reports we have in here. And what we have in each of these sections is one called overview. And what that is, is little snapshots of data that's available in the reports underneath it. So extra information is under there. You can find on this bit. So with acquisition and what they've provided for standard is user acquisition, which is all about how users found you the first time they came to your website. So the first time they came, they might come back multiple times, but user acquisition is all about how you first acquired the person. 
The traffic acquisition is people coming back to your website each time. So you will have different sessions each time you come back to the website. This is one you'll probably use more often, which is traffic acquisition. And this is all based on the session that you have. So each time you come back to the website. If I load this report, you'll have the option to change the date range in the top right. And the, uh, it'll have a couple of charts and graphs up here, which I don't particularly like. And as we scroll down this list, you'll see that Google is trying to categorize the traffic that we're seeing into different areas. So we've got email as a, it's called session default channel group, and it's categorizing in different ways. So emails is from email campaigns. Uh, organic search is people searching on Google or Bing. We have direct when Google doesn't know, um, or people are putting it directly in the address file. Referral is other websites sending traffic. And then we have organic social, which is um, uh, people sharing links on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, things like that. And we have organic video, which is YouTube videos. And we sometimes see this, which is unassigned. If we see unassigned, it's when links have been, um, people have come from links clicking through to the website. And it's usually when um, UTM parameters use, so ca campaign tracking. I'll add this into the resources, some more information about what that means. If it doesn't match any of the existing default channel groups, Google will put it into unassigned. So you might see some of that. Now, this is the bit where usually in the old interface, you start to click into these and go deeper into it. You can't in here. So what we need to do is use this drop down. So if I click this drop down, I can then see extra information about what the link is. And if I click source and medium, this will reload the data and provide much more useful information about what's happening here. So we're seeing these are email campaigns. We send our campaigns through click dimensions. We've got our Google organic and our, our top website referral is actually the artscouncil.org.uk. And t.co is actually Twitter. So this list, is accessible by choosing the drop down here. So we can choose source and medium. We can have a look at campaigns. So you can access that data in these reports. OK, so I just wanted to talk about some of what the data available in them is and means. And you might hear this quite a lot about Google Analytics 4. It's something called event. Now, the way it structures data is that any user action and any specific interaction with your site can be classed as an event. So someone visiting a page is an event. Someone scrolling down the page is an event. Someone's clicking a link to go somewhere else is an event. So it structures the data in that way. And we're going to look at that further on in the more complex part of the webinar. Users is not all of your users. And this is a, a common question that we see as well. This is active users. And active users are users that have been on your website for more than a second. So it's not people that have just loaded your website and sat in a different browser and not actively looking at it. These The user count is people that are actually on your website and doing things. And what we see um, for the next stage of that is the sessions that people have. So each time they come back, we have another one called engage sessions. So an engage session so someone doing things is when they're um, on the website for longer than 10 seconds, or they've had a conversion event, which we're going to look at in a bit, or they visited more than two pages. So these engaged sessions are much more valuable users. So universal analytics focused on things like bounce rate, which was a negative metric. What, you know, what GA4 is doing is actually focusing all about the positive metrics. It's looking on the good stuff. So it's these are the people that you actually want to know about instead of the ones that have gone away and done, and done nothing with you. And when we're looking through the interface of this list, you'll see that the, we have them. And if you hover over any of these, it will tell you more information about what these metrics mean. So we have users, your sessions, and then we have an engaged session. So your number of engaged sessions is much lower than sessions, but these are much more valuable people. They're doing many more things for us than what these ones are. And we can scroll along and see more information about what's available by using this horizontal scroll bar to find out more information about the engagement rate, you know, how active and what percentage of people actually have been engaged. 
what events they've completed, and then the conversions. We've set up conversions, so we have that data. We don't have any, we don't take any money for our website, so we don't have total revenue. So we that's that's why we've got nothing on there. And when we customize a report, we can actually remove these as well. So this is all reports in this section. And this does this as well sometimes. When you hover over it, it disappears. So it's a quirk with GA4 at the moment. The other section that we can act, uh, um, access is called expirations. So if you can't find the data in reports, you go to the next one down, and that's expirations. And there are templates in here that you can then cr um, create your own reports. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to create a couple of reports in both sections to just show you the type of data that's available in both. So on to um, part two. So this is about building custom reports. I'm only going to do two because we're limited for time, but there are loads of other types of reports that might be useful for you to build as well. And a lot of the um, uh, people working in the cultural sector, the different um, uh, organizations, agencies, they are providing and creating content that is related to this as well. So it's not just me. You don't have to use me for all of your source of data around GA4. There are um, any of the, the agencies that are creating that. I know um, one further, the Digital um, Analytics Agency, they've created a whole course about building some of these as well. So you might want to check those out as well. Again, we're going to put links to those things in the resources to follow this. For this bit, we're just going to cover, cover two. I'm going to show you how to customize the interface. So this is really, really important. So the first one, we're going to build is around referral websites. So we want to look regularly about what websites are sending traffic. And secondly, we're going to look at so building one for email campaigns as well. And I can do that, all that in the interface itself. So I'm going to go back to analytics. You'll see on this list, we have lifecycle with acquisition engagement and then user stuff about the users. At the bottom of the list, we have something called a library. If we click library, we can edit it all. And this is a super huge and powerful thing about Google Analytics 4 is that you can customize the whole lot. So this list can change. So in here is the list of reports that are available that have already been created. And you can pick and choose them to sit in things called collections. So this one is a life cycle collection, which is this. And within it, we have topics, acquisition, engagement, and retention is what these sections are. So we're going to create a brand new collection and a brand new topic and then add it to this list. And the way I can do that is by accessing the reports in here and then changing them. I can build a brand new one, or I can actually edit one that already exists. So because we're looking at acquisition, we're looking at referral websites and email campaigns. A lot of that data already exists in this report, but we just need to filter out everything that we don't want. So what I can do is press this pencil icon right over on the right-hand side to customize the report. So first off, I really hate the, I don't, I don't like the way this is too much data. It's very messy. So these charts, you can turn off. There's a little eye icon here. I can just click and turn them off. Gone. So they're out of the way. Didn't like them. The other thing is that I can choose what I want the first drop down to be, and I can remove other things as well. So I choose the dimensions here. So you see that this one is defaulted at the moment, uh, session default channel group, which is this one. I could choose a different one. So I could choose the source and medium, because that's the, that's the data that's going to give me much more interesting stuff, because set that as the default. And then what I can do is remove these. I can reorder them as well, move and click and move. But what I'm going to actually do is just delete everything else because I don't want anything else. And remove, 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 and remove. If I wanted other options in this drop down list, I could add them in here. So I can pick and choose different dimensions that are available for us. But if I press apply, that will change this. So I've only got one option now. And what I want to do is add a, re a filter just to look at referral websites. So I'm going to add a report filter here. So I'm going to include a dimension. And from that list we saw before, it was called um, Session Default Channel Group. And in this list, down here, I can actually search for it, make it quicker. Session Default Panel Group. 
And what I'm saying is that I only want to look at referring websites. So session default channel group, my referring website is just referrals. So I'm going to pick that, press OK, press apply. So what that will do is change this report to only be focusing on that and just give me the metrics against those. This metrics list as well, if none of this is actually information that you need to know, you can turn it off here. So in our metrics option, we're not taking any money. So revenue, I can get rid of. I don't need to know an event count. Uh, events per session, no, I don't really need that. Uh, I might just, I only want to focus on engaged sessions. So I'm going to remove sessions. Again, if I press apply, it then changes this report and the data available in it. So that's all configured. And all I have to do is save it now. Now, I press save here, and it gives you two options. You can save changes to the current report. Now, we want to keep that other report. So what I'm going to do is create a new one, save as a new report. And I'm going to call this referral websites. Let's save. So I've saved that. There was a little notification that came up that is available in my library now. So if I go back, it's now here. If I click back into reports, it will disappear. I don't know where it's gone. It sits in my library. It's not in this list yet, but it sits in my library. So what I can do in my library is create a whole new um, collection for that information. So I'm going to create a new one. Um, there are templates available that you can pick and choose from. I'm going to create a blank one. And you give it a name. So I'm going to call this for the marketing team, just marketing. You can you can call this whatever you want. You just edit the text there. And your topics is what is the question that you're trying to answer with the data? So instead of just saying acquisition, which you have to know the terminology for, why not put something like this? How did users find us? Press apply. So then I have my topic, and I can put reports within a topic. So in this list, we now have one for referral websites. So I can find it down here, referral websites, and I click, click and drag it and pop it in there. I press save, and that's um, it's saved within the library, ready to go. And I move back. My collection should be here in this list. It's called marketing. At the moment, it's unpublished. So what I can do is press this button and then press publish, and it will add it to this list. So it's fully customizable, this list, which clean, cleans it all up. So has that updated? I think it has. There we go, published. So it now appears in my list of reports here. So marketing, how did users find us? Referral websites. Lovely, isn't it? Really nice. What I can also do is remove the ones that I don't need. So lifecycle and user, if I didn't want them, I can unpublish them. That one, and user, unpublish. And then when I go to reports now, It worked. Sometimes it's the cat <laughs> just saves it. My only option is marketing. How do users find us? Referral websites. Click. So it cleans up your interface, and it can, you can just focus on the information that you want to know. So straight away, I've got my list of referring websites all the way up. We've actually started using for our bookings. We're, we're redirecting Calendly back to our website. So we actually don't want that on, to, on there. We know that's a user journey that people go on. So we might add that to our referral exclusion list, which we talked about in the last session. Um, if you're seeing anything at that, like referring websites, which is your like payment gateway for your ticketing system and things like that, you can add that those in there. Um, just to answer your quick question, Caroline, this in, yeah, this change the interface does it for all users. So everybody that logs into this account will actually see this list just like this. So it's for everybody that accesses it. Um, so we've got our referral websites. If we wanted to do um, the same for our um, other one, which is the um, 
in our campaigns, we could do exactly the same process and just choose different filtering. So we can pick from this list that we've got in here, which is our um, is our acquisition one. Let's find out what it's called. So your um, collections, you can filter it by here. So we've got business objective ones. We've got our life cycle ones. So I'm going to open up my um, life cycle one for um, traffic acquisition, which is what we had before. Okay, so this is exactly what we were doing before, and we're just going to do it slightly differently. So we're going to add a new filter. And we're going to use our session default channel group. And our, I'm just going to choose email as my option there. Yeah, sorry. And again, like this, this looks a bit nicer because it's just one option there. When you start adding the other options in, it starts to get quite messy. So again, I'm going to just turn those off. And then my dimensions, I want my source and medium set as the default. I'm going to move that to the top. I'm going to leave those other ones in for now for this one. Press apply. So we now have our breakdown of campaign emails that we're sending out. So uh, save. Um, actually, we want, we want to know um, the campaign name. Um, this is our session source. So in our dimensions, our session campaign is the one we want as default, actually. That's default. Press apply. There we go. So these are our um, newsletters that we send out as a DCN, the traffic that's coming in through there. So press save, save as a new report. In our campaign. So. And then we go back, go back to our library, and then our marketing, we can edit the collection. And we can move our email campaigns into our list and press save, save changes to the current one. And again, that is uh, customizing the interface and it will update in this list. So it will be available for quick reference in here. Um, yeah, there we go. So that is your um, the, the reporting section. So you can add, add to this list, you can change the wording and you can change the, the question that you're asking of the data in here. If you want to go deeper into the data, because it doesn't tell you everything, when you're choosing things from that list of metrics, it's not everything that's available. You might want to go deeper and you have to do that in the other section, which is called expiration. So what we're going to do in this section is going to look at building a report for the file downloads and then another one for your site search as well. So looking at search terms on your website. So in explorations, there are lots of different um, templates that are available that you can pick and choose, and it will structure the data in different ways. You know, if you're look, if you want to look at building a, a funnel visualization about how people move through a checkout process, you can do that. You can choose the a template, and then you change the steps as people go through. I'm just going to do a really simple one, looking at what files of people downloaded on our website in the period that we selected here. And these first two columns, we have to pick and choose the data that we want to look at. And I'm going to give it a name for a start. I'm going to call it file downloads. You could call it something else like um, website performance or something like that, because you can have different tabs for different sets of data. You could have one for file downloads and another one for site search. I'm going to do it one report expiration for each just to show you the difference in the, the bits that we select in here. So this list that we have here, dimensions um, is the category of information. And you can pick and choose the bits of information that you want to know. Now, for us, it's about files. And these are sat under general. If you can't find it in these lists, you can search for it at the top. So I'm going to click general um, and then file name. It's available here, so file name. If you hover over these, again, it will give you an explanation of what that data is. Or you can use that cheat sheet that we've got that link to as well. That's available for you. So file name, hover over there. So I want that one. And um, another one we want is one called, this is one you might use quite a lot in configuring these reports. It's one called event name. The reason we need that is to filter out anything that is not a file download. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. 
And the metric, again, if you're not looking at like engagement metrics for like time or um, page views, the, 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 the metric that we use the most is called event count. So it's how many times has an event happened? So I'm going to import that one. Okay, so file name, event name, event count. So I can move these across into the second column by either click and drag in, or I can double click them and they'll move across. So we have our file name is in our rows and our values is event count. So how many times something has happened? You'll see the first row is 29,000. And that's because it's counting all events across the website. So as we said earlier, events can be page views, scrolls, video plays, lots of different things. So I need to add a filter to this data to look specifically at file downloads. And I can click the filter at the bottom here, event name exactly matches. And then if I start typing, file download is the event. We're going to look at what these ones are in the next section. Press apply. So that, that removes that first line and it gives me what files have that been downloaded. Now, with um, the, the data that's available, there's actually a, a text limit to what it collects. It's really annoying because in the past, you would only really want the actual file name itself, but this gives you the full URL as well. So we're on WordPress, so we've got WP content uploads, the data is uploaded, and then which, um, which file was downloaded. So sometimes it's actually cut off of some of the information in here. So this gives us our top 10. Uh, we can choose the rows that are available here, and we can visualize it in different ways. This is a table format. It works really well for this kind of information, but you can pick and choose different ones. Um, uh, and if you want to download it, you can actually export this. So over here, we can export the data, there we go. and it will expo export it into a couple of options that you can pick and choose there. So if you want to save this to, to, to look at elsewhere, you can do. There is a share option here, but it only shares it with other people that can log into this account. So they'll be able to see it in their explorations, but they can't edit it. They can't change the date range or change any of the elements of this. They'll have to save a copy of it into their account and then um, make changes to that one, which is a bit of a, a, again, a restriction on how the shareability of stuff within here. So that's our file downloads. Um, if we wanted to want to have a look at what search terms people are using on the website, we can do exactly the same process. So your dimensions. So we want search term. I'm going to search for search term. I'm going to break it by search for search term. Search term. Um, oh, we also wanted event name again. And then our metrics, event count. How many times the event has happened. So I double click, they will move across. I can rename it. Oh, terms. And then the filter again, I'm going to put event name. And this one is actually called view search results. And we're going to look at those in a second. What these mean. View search results apply. That will remove that first line. Oh, Analytics 4, GA4, Google Analytics 4, a lot of people are searching for that at the moment, which is why you're all here. So thanks for joining me today. Okay. So once you've done this, it automatically saves it. And when you go back to the expirations, whatever name you've given it will be available here. And then you can just click back into that, change the date range, do some further analysis if you want to. You can segment the data using the options here, um, and you can add in additional dimensions and metrics if you wanted to. So you can see, for example, if you want to see what page people were on when they were downloading things, you could add the page title in and things like that. Again, you can't break anything in here, so please just play around and have, have, have fun with it. Um, just enjoy yourself. So those are two options. Um, the third one is one that we talk about quite a lot, and it's like the next stage of it. I'm going to, I'm going to be doing um, a further, there is a resource on this for a basic report, but I'm going to do a webinar on it later this year. And it's about Looker Studio. So it's a way, another data visualization tool. It's not within the Google Analytics 4 interface. It's a way that you can actually um, create custom reports and um, pull in data from Google Analytics 4, but also other sources. And you can visualize it in a different way. Um, just to show you what that would look like, 
it's it's different um, from uh, moving through these is that if you're not used to this interface or you're sharing with other people, this is quite hard to absorb and know what it is you're looking at. With um, Looker Studio, you could create a report which has explanations about what it is people are looking at, guidance about what they need to do. So here's where you can change the date. This chart shows users over time. Uh, we've set up conversions for our core things that we want to happen on our website, which is Ask a Pet Champion, signing up to our newsletter, or booking a one-to-one -one with us. So we can track those in analytics and then provide a report on it. We can have different pages in here. So looking at acquisition, about how users find us, what campaigns are working. So much like what you can create within the GA4 interface, you can just replicate in, in, in Looker Studio. Things like what content is popular as well. So we've got what pages people are looking at. Uh, we've actually done an integration with extra information coming in from Tag Manager, which gives us the actual author of the content as well. Um, so that's something we're going to cover in the next webinar. Um, people keep looking at how to live stream a Zoom meeting to YouTube, which is quite, um, it's still popular. I created that in lockdown, still getting loads of people coming to it. And again, we can show users over time. Um, Looker Studio is free, Joe. Thanks for asking. Um, and then thirdly is um, like geographic. So look, you can have maps about your users. So we've got our, our worldwide reach. What we've got going on here. So loads of people all over the world. Now, what we've put in our report is a reminder is that we're here to develop and increase digital skills and maturity of the cultural, creative and cultural sector in England. So that's our, our why we exist. Our vision statement is at the top of our report. The issue with this report, you might have noticed, is that it's not filtered just to England. So if we're using these metrics to show if we're on track for where we want to be, we would actually need to add a filter for all of this to filter down to uh, England. And that's something that we can do within the interface um, and the filter. So we can add a filter to just go, just show England. And that will change all of these numbers. They will drop significantly because we're not getting all of those people. But it's something to think about when you are building reports is what are, what are your aims of, as an organization? And are the metrics aligned to what you're trying to achieve? Is that what is that what you're is it showing that you're you're getting to where you need to be? Um, when you're building custom reports, consider these things. So who is the audience? So is it yourself? Are you happy with the interface and looking at it? How often will it be access? Is it something that needs to go out monthly and sent to uh, your senior leadership team? Is it something that you're gonna be looking at every day? And then what level of detail is needed? So it might be just top level numbers are needed for a senior leadership report, but you need to go deeper into the data. So the, we've got three options there. We've got reports, GA4 reports, just reports. Um, then we've got expirations, and then we've looked at Looker Studio as well. So there's three different options there, and it all depends on what you need out of it is it will dictate which place that you go to get that data from. Now, I've just done a quick table, which I've just realized actually has an admission, but the first one is um, look at if you uh, the functionality you need from these three options. Um, I've just done a quick table of some of the functionality. There is loads of functionality, and there are issues with some of the data that comes through to Looker Studio as well when it comes to segmentation and audiences. But we're not going to go into that in here. But here's just something to consider when you're thinking about it. Now, maps um, Looker Studio can do them. Expirations can do them too. I've forgotten to put the tick there. So imagine a tick there if you would. Funnels, they're really good in the, uh, they've just added it to the reporting section. It's a brand new feature. Expirations, they're really, really good. They're funnels there. It's really hard to do the same thing in Looker Studio. So you might want to be, if you want to do funnels, you have to use the other platforms. Commentary is really important to show when we're talking about what's, the, the questions we're asking like, and, and explaining to somebody what it is they're looking at, you can't do that in GA4. So using Looker Studio allows you to add that commentary and annotations about what it is. The share options are available in expirations and reports, but they're quite limited. You usually have, you, well, you do have to log into the account to access the data. You can't just 
click a link without logging in. That's something you can do in Looker Studio. And the most important one for me is you can schedule emails to get sent. Like every month you can send a report out automatically. You can't do that um, in GA4 at the moment. They keep adding functionality all the time. So um, uh, Carrie just asked a question uh, straight. Can you move a funnel report into Looker Studio? You can't just move it in. You can replicate it, but it's it's it takes a bit of work to do. There are some templates that allow you to do it, but it's a bit, it's not as easy and nice as the way you, you would do it within the exploration section of GA4. So we've done the first two. Woo! So I hope they've opened your eyes to some of the functionality that's available. The next bit is we're going to go whistle top store because this is going to hurt your brain. We're going to talk about events, parameters, and uh, conversions in a really short time. And then we're going to look at configuring GA4 to match objectives. So that's going to go into, it's going to feed into the next webinar as well. So we've already had 100 of you join, uh, sign up for that one. So if you haven't already, please do sign up for that second webinar. So we're going to go deeper into this. So we're going to go really quickly through this. So then we can get to some of your questions as well. Um, so please add them into the Q&A section and we'll try and get those to those at the end. So. The core of GA4 is about events, parameters, and conversions. Now, some of these things are tracked automatically for you. The third one, conversions, isn't. And that's the bit that we're going to go into in step four, which is about configuring it for you. So the first two, an event. So an event, we mentioned earlier on, the specific interaction with your website. A parameter is additional information about an event that is sent along with the event. So if you have an event sent, I'm going to, I've got a nice little diagram to show you in a second. But if you, you're sending an event, you want to send extra data with it, that goes in a parameter. And the last one is conversion. So these are the things that are important for you. So you can track all of this um, engagement data, looking at um, where people are coming from, what pages are the most popular, things like that. What, what are you trying to get people to? What is the conversion point that you're trying to get them to? Are you trying to get them to fill out a form, sign up to something, do things like that? Have to think in context to your organization. It's not all about shop sales. It's not always about buying tickets. There are other things that people do. So there are some standard events in GA4, and these, this is what these look like. Um, and they're named in this way, I'm gonna show you in a second. So we have first visit, so that's the first time someone comes to your website, someone viewing a page, um, so I'm beginning their next their session with you. And then the, the user engagement metric. So we talked about how long they're on the website. And there are different, you, you might see here, the, the way it's structured the, it, with events. So again, this is the stuff that starts to make your brain hurt. Is one of these. Can anyone say in the chat which one it is? We've got camel case, kebab case, snake case. Anyone guess? If you're going straight in there, sending it. Get bab. <laughs> yeah, well done, everyone. Yeah, so it's it, it's snake. Yeah. So you're going to remember that now. Snake case. So it's all lowercase and underscores for any spaces. So it requires you when you're sending event data to GA4 is to use it in that structure. Um. And there is something called enhanced measurement. When you've created your account, these things should usually be turned on. One is called click, which is really a not very useful name, but it actually means outbound clicks. So when people leave your website, what are they clicking on? The next is file downloads. So we looked at that earlier when we created that report. Other ones are form start and form submit, so interaction with your forms. I do recommend that one's turned off because it adds a lot of messy data and doesn't work very well. Uh, it's a new, it's a relatively new feature. I'll turn that off if I will. Um, the next is scroll. So it'll show people when they, uh, the, a standard, it will go, when you've hit 90%, it will say people have hit 90% scroll. So if you've got content, your long form content, are people scrolling all the way down? Uh, we've got view search results. So the search terms we were looking at, and then we have people interacting with embedded YouTube videos. If you're using a different platform, which is not YouTube, like Vimeo, this won't pick it up. You'll have to use Tag Manager to do that or a different way. So come to the next webinar. We'll talk about that as well. 
This is what it looks like when you are setting it up within your data stream. You can toggle the ones that you want to track on. So this is your instance measurement. So that's your events. Your parameters is where the extra bit of information is. So if we were just looking at the file download as an event, it would just say one event has happened and it will just keep counting. Then another event, so two, three. That doesn't give them as much data. It just tells us ah, a file has been downloaded. If we want to learn, know what it is, we have to look at the parameter data, which is the event extension, the file extension. So is it a PDF? Is it a text? Uh, is it a file name? Now, uh, what is the file name? So again, the URL. So the structure of that, so to reiterate how that is structured, is that there are some things which are um, some events which are set at the user level, and that's things about the user. So their geographic location, or maybe their age, if you've turned on the feature called Google Signals. The second is events uh, about the session events that they have as they come through. So if we were to look at the page view event, which gets passed, event parameters, so a page view has happened, for us to understand what page it is, we have to look at the parameters. So page location, which is if we were visiting the home page of the Digital Culture Network, it would tell us this. And then it will give us the page title as well. So what is the page title? So the bit that's in the little tab, the bit of text that's in there, what is that? So they get passed with any event, um, the page location, page title are ones that uh, standard events that get, uh, standard parameters that get passed with every event, but we can add additional ones. And again, use this list to understand what they are and how, how the, the data comes across. If we were to look at the file download, it has a parameter called file name, and that's your um, URL, and the file extension is PDF. But you might want to add additional parameters, and that's where the configuration comes in, is that you might want to pass extra data about your events in. So um, how, you need to think about what it is you need to know to then set it up and configure it correctly. Which with, with each event, you can actually pass 25 different parameters, so extra information about each event. So you, you can there's a limit, but there is lots and lots of data that you can pass at the same time. And we're going to look at that in a bit. So the, the parameters tell us more about what's happening. And these ones, no matter what event is sent, these ones get sent with it. So if you wanted to look at what page people were on when they were downloading a file, you'll be able to find it out because it passes this data through already. But you might want, as I say, additional information to come through as well. So from the reporting side, you don't see them in this name. In this is like more back-end names. You actually see it in a different way. You'll see it in nice like nice wording, such as language, page location, page referrer, page title, screen resolution. So everything that we're looking at in that expiration section, this is the kind of text that we will see in here. And if you need help with any definitions, I know, again, that emoji, ugh, painful. There's a lot of information I'm giving you right now. You can watch this recording back, so don't worry. And you know we're here to help go through these things if you need support. But there are GA, GA4, Google will provide help documents on these things as well. So it explains what a dimension is, what data is available for each one. So thinking about that in that way. So the last section, before we jump on a super quick q and is we're going to look at configuring GA4 to match your objectives. And as I said, this, this is like, a short and a really short version. We're going to go into far more detail in um, the next webinar as well. So in uh, the next webinar, it's all about using Tag Manager, but also using um, custom parameters that you might want to pass through. What I've done is create a website that Andy is going to stick in the chat. It's called Peasant Party. So I've made it a pretend organization. And if you would, if you wouldn't mind just having a look at the website, you can click the link that um, Andy will put in. So I've created this. It doesn't exist. It's only pretend. But have a look at this website and think about what four things would we want to track? What, what's, what's really interesting for us to know? So we can, we've got information about people scrolling down the page. This is a one-page website, so they can't actually go anywhere else. But this is full of um, objectives. 
and things that might be really useful for us to track as we go through here. Now, some of this stuff we can track using Google Analytics 4. Some of it we might need to use Tag Manager. Um, but we're going to look at some of those right now in the, the next five minutes. We're going to plow through. So stick in the chat if, you know, a couple of suggestions. What do you think would be useful for us to track on this website? What, what, what would be a conversion in your eyes? So someone comes to the website, doing, actually doing something, doing a core action. Yeah. Good. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. So we see that there's quite a lot from, especially with tour organizations, is that they don't have any ticketing system themselves. They send it off to either other people or they use Eventbrite. So if you click this, it will take you to Eventbrite, which is Andy's next webinar next week. So please sign up if you wouldn't mind. So it's just pretend. But what we can do is that I'm going to use that plugin that we mentioned earlier on to look at some of these links. So I'm, I've loaded it. I pressed F12 to load this up in, uh, in um, Google Chrome. And if I press this, which is start a buggy, I can start to click some of these things and see what happens. So I've activated it. It's loaded the website and it tells me a page view has happened. It's passing it through to my, tag, my analytics account. It tells me here what event parameters might be passed as well. So page view doesn't pass any parameters, but it does use the, um, are they, are they shared ones. Yeah. So it uses the standard ones, which is the, the location and the, the title as well. I'll zoom in a bit. If I click other things on here, so I click the polled art party book now button. I've used control and click. So it opens a different tab just so I can see it. If I click that. Another event appears in this list, which is called click. So this one gives me more information. And then these are the event parameters that get passed with that click. So the link URL is this one. The link domain is Eventbrite. So what I'm able to do is use this data for the core actions that I might want to track. And for the download, if I click this one, so again, using control and click, it's going to download that PDF. It will appear in this list, file download. So I can look again, what, was, what information is passed through here? So link text, download now, file name, what is the file name? And then the file extension is a PDF. So this, this extension allows me to see the data that is passed to GA4 when things are happen. And if I want to track certain things, I recommend creating a measurement plan so in this example, I have created, uh, let's make this a bit bigger. So I've listed some of the conversions. So you're all right. You, you, you picked up on all of these. So well done. Is that I've, if I wanted to track activity pack download, so specifically the school's packs or the book now or people clicking contact us, donate and newsletter sign up. Now I can create events for these to pass data into analytics and then they can be my conversion points. So this is more of the advanced configuration that you might want to do. So thinking back to our snake case, I want to create one for book now. Uh, and I'm just going to do one for donate as well. Um, we can create one to do the ones. And what we're going to do is that so the form submissions are really tricky when it comes to using either the built-in thing with GA4 or the way it works. If, you're, if you have any form on your website, I highly recommend having a thank you page when someone fills it out and then they redirect to that. So in the settings of your form, you can set them to redirect to a different page on your website, thank you page. And then you can set that as a destination objective in Google Analytics 4. It makes it far easier to do any of um, the configuration when it comes to conversion, those things. So we're not going to do those just yet. Come to the next webinar. I'm going to do loads more about that. Now, contact us. If we were to look at people clicking um, uh, contact us, so we have, phone, we have an email address and a phone number. If I click the email address, um, it won't appear in this list because it's not something that is tracked by, by enhanced measurement. Um, so we have to track that separately in, in a different way. Um, and if it was this, 
um, the phone number again. Um, it might come up as a link click, so we might be able to do it that way. And then we've got a form. So there's three different ways that someone might contact us, but we want to pass that into analytics as one uh, event. And that's what we're going to do in the next webinar, because that's more complex. So we're just going to focus on the first two. So if we're looking at this, we're looking at book now and then donate. Now, when we were looking at this list, we had um, this one. Where's it gone? I might just click it again. Click on is this one. Yeah. So we can use this information to build a new event in Google Analytics. So I'm going to go to Google Analytics. I'm going to switch to my demo account that we, we have set up right up here. Uh, that's it. This one. Now, what I can do in the admin section, so again, this is a place where you can break things. We're going to go to somewhere called events in the list when it loads. Events. And then we can create a new event, so a brand new event. So we're going to use the GA4 interface to do this. We're going to create one. So based on what we're going to call it here is the name I'm going to give it. So a new one. And you'll see it gives us some options. So you might want to reuse some of the recommended ones it has here. So like for um, newsletter sign up, the sign up one is actually a good, good option for that one. For this one, we're going to actually just call it book now. And what we're doing is saying, what event is it? So switching back to this. It is the event is called click. So an event equals click. And type it. Click. And we're going to say the event parameter. So again, from that list, what is unique about it? I'm actually going to use the link domain. So any click, any link that's clicked, which has got Eventbrite in it, I'm going to use that one. So the link. So we're using the parameters. I know this is brain hurt stuff. So link domain equals Eventbrite. So if I create that from today, anybody who clicks a link that has Eventbrite in it, a new event will appear in my list of events that I can toggle on as a conversion event. So you can create your custom objectives by. So that's our book now. And then I'm going to do my one for donate. So again, just same all lowercase event name. Again, it's a click event. So I mentioned if you're having a, um, a thank you page, you could use um, the page view event. So event name equals click, and then um, uh, link domain equals, and then we can look back up using our list. So when we did our um, donations, was it that one? This one. Yeah. Uh, just do it again. Oh, I didn't click it, I don't think. Donate now. This one? That one. Um, donate, this goes to enthuse.com. So we're going to use that to build our new event. Um, right. So this option at the bottom is copying parameters from the source event. That brings um, data from the click event. So anything that's passed with that, so the link domain, the link URL, will also get passed into this new event. If I press create, it'll appear in this list as donate and book now. Now I'm going to switch to one I made earlier because if you create things, you won't see any data in for 24 hours until somebody completes those actions. I've done that here in, in already. So we see the book now exists here. If I want to mark it as a conversion for us, we can toggle it on here, mark as conversion. I can choose my donate one as well, mark as conversion. So some of the events are more important than others. We're going to click through those. And then when I look at my reports, there is then the last option is one for conversions, and I will see the number of people that have completed the thing that I want them to do, and then as we go through to that. Okay, so I know that was a lot, <laughs> but when we look at the building um, your own events, there are ways to do it using the GA4 interface. Um, you could ask a developer to add different tags to do some, some of this stuff, or we can use Google Tag Manager. We've just done it in that way. Um, the next session is going to go deeper into the, the, the third option. So please do join us with that one. But when you're building custom events, have a think about these. 
can I get the data from existing GA4 events? So using the terminology that already exists, the di different dimensions and events that are collected, can I create a new event for my objectives using that data? And then do I need additional parameters as well that need to be sent with it? Okay, um, so I know we've just hit um, three o'clock now. But I just want to say this before we jump on, we'll have a quick Q&A uh, if you can still stay with us. I know some of you might need to go. Um, we'll add stuff into the resources, but keep this in mind. You're not alone. We are here to help. Um, and you can book in a one-to-one -one with me if you are uh, in the creative and cultural sector in England. Um, so apologies that we, we've hit the, the hour point, but we will do a short Q&A now if you can stay with us for a few minutes. Okay, Andy, come back and join me and we'll go through some of these questions. So yeah, thank you everybody for coming today. Wow, that was that was quite something, James. You rattled through that very, very well. Um, the audience, well, I think it's probably the best audience we've ever had looking at the chat and the uh, Q&A. Some really, really interesting questions. There are 27 of them, though, James. So <laughs> Let's go. You're a popular fellow. Do you want to, shall I just pick a couple kind of at random and you can have a go? Yeah, let's go for it. Okay. Um, so one from Laura Kenwright and also Fiona Booth, which is around... Um, I have the message, the property setup is not complete. Settings may be completed for you based on your original UA property, unless you opt out in the connected UA property. What does that mean, exclamation mark? Yeah, so um, it, it means that Google has a set of options in their accounts, um, which it's trying to get you to do. Some of them don't even make sense um, uh, when it's about completing your GA4 property. The one about migrating data for your universal analytics, um, is um, it's trying to bring, if you, if you let it bring across data uh, and try to do the migration, it actually adds a lot of um, terrible conversion events in because it's trying to match things. The, the two platforms are very, very different. So if you can say no to those things, stop it working, that's the best way. The best way to do it is customize this yourself, set it up yourself, and then you'll have full control over it. The stuff that might have historically sat in Universal Analytics when it comes to the um, configuration will not work very well with your new version. Um, it's not the historical data. That's another uh, question we get quite a lot. You don't get the historical data migrating across from Universal Analytics. That goes, that, that's gone. That's sat in Universal Analytics. It's available for the next year for you, for the next 12 months till the, um, the 1st of July, 2024. So you can still go into those reports, but in a week's time, it's going to stop collecting data in Universal Analytics. So switching over and using GA4 as quickly as possible, definitely recommend. Oh, oh you're muted. Andy, Andy, I can't hear you, you're muted. Okay, uh, another quick question from Steph Cullen. What is step, what is thresholding and how do you stop it being applied to your data? We're getting this messaging everywhere. Google Analytics has applied <laughs> thresholding to this card and we only display the data when the data meets the minimum aggregation thresholds. So if you have Google signals turned on, so in admin, there is, let's wait for it to load, it's low. There is an option on here, um, which is about your, Data, data settings and then data collection. There is an option here called Google Signals Data. Now, you can read all this about it, um, but the, what it's using is Google's advertising network to understand about its Google users that are logged into Google, um, people that are interacting with all the adverts and things that it follows people around. So it's only a subset of the people that come into your website. What it does give you if you turn this on is stuff in the demographic data. So in the reports, when you go to the demographic about the users, you've got age and the basic gender that people have selected in your Google account. So it's a small amount of users. It's usually about 20 to 20 to 30 percent of your users. If you turn it on, it causes an issue for thresholding in your uh, reports because what in Google Eyes, what is thinking is that you can identify these users because it's only a small number of users because of these other attributes. So the thresholding applies to remove those results from your list. So that's what you're seeing when it comes to thresholding. Okay. I hope that, I hope that answers that. <laughs> 
Be beautifully answered, James. Um, we've still got over 100 people hanging back with us. So should we, should we ask a couple more questions? One from Tina. I think, come on, everybody, give us a thumbs up if you want us to continue answering <laughs> We've got time. Yeah, give us a little emoji. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, let's just crack on. Okay, so one from Tina. Where can we find the business objectives section so that we can click for the baseline reports? Um, you know what? I don't know. I was looking. I was thinking about that earlier today. Um, I don't know if you can reset uh, set them again in the setup assistant. I don't know where where you can pick them. Okay. Uh, I don't know the answer. I'm gonna I'm gonna find out though. There, okay. is, there must be a way to get back to it because yeah, I, yeah. For, in our example for the digital culture network, I'd actually managed to get the business objective ones back in, um, but I can't. I can't remember how I did it. But I'll add that into the resources as a. As a okay, so so Tini, you've stumped him there. Well done. Yeah, well um, done. Thanks, Tini. <laughs> Misha Farlow. Um, all socials are appearing as, e.g., Facebook referral rather than Facebook slash organic social. Does this mean that organic social is not categorized by source within GA4? Great question. Yeah, we some, yeah you sometimes see that when it comes to. Um, let's just switch to our analytics account. So, although it's classed as a referral, um, because the source is Facebook, it's going to categorize it as. Um, the, in the default channel group as oh no i've just removed them all haven't i um, <laughs> um in the default channel group it, it will add them in as um uh, as the, the the organic social so it will be classed as organic social um and if there is a help article um uh, default which um explains how it works works out these uh, the different bits so for your organic social um it goes further into detail i think yeah organic organic social so it's using this to to work out how organic social so if the medium is these things or it's the list of social sites it will then categorize it in that way but it's still it's still a referral but it's it's classing it in that way does that does that answer that one? Yeah. Okay. Um, I've had a, a question in the chat from Carla, and similarly uh, one from Julia Gorko in the Q and A, which is: Is there any way to get information as percentages, e.g., percentage of traffic coming from social media? I think rather than integers, I think. Um, yeah. So it will the percentage of sorry, what was that? Uh, percentage of social media traffic, for example. Um. Based on active sessions, yeah, you, you can't do calculations within the GA4 interface. It won't, it doesn't give you those within here. Um, but you could do that in Locker Studio quite easily. You, and that's kind of how we've created these um, conversion events at the bottom here, these conversion rates. So it uses something called blended data. So it picks one metric and another one. So it's sessions divided by how many people have actually completed it. So you could actually calculate something very similar for social traffic. To create that i don't think i've seen it in the interface where you can just pick something like that okay so julia and carla if you're still with us um and that has not answered your question um yeah get in touch with james through the channel um through the link within the the chat function there so a uh, question from amber peterson we're still seeing bounce rate in ga4 is that here to stay it is it they brought the, it, they didn't have it initially because they were like, we're going to look at the positive, we're going to look at engagement rates. But they've added it back in because everybody complained. So if you do want to access it, it is in the list of metrics available. So you can look at bounce rate if you want to. Um, engagement rate is better, but if you want to look at bounce rate, it is better. <laughs> Okie doke. Um, Beth Sinden has got a question. What is the difference between the metrics e-commerce purchases and transactions? Mm. Uh uh, e-commerce purchases oh, hang on transactions is each purchase with multiple items so one transaction has happened and within it is multiple items and then the e-commerce purchase is oh, I don't, i'm not quite sure um it's either all of the items within it or the value of all of the items 
I believe. I wish I could help. Okay. Um, so we've got another one here from uh, Lee. Is it possible to set up a custom report for a specific section of your website, which I'm guessing is a, a ring fenced part of the website? Yeah. Yeah, you could easily. So um, there's, there's a couple of ways to do it. So in, in if you were using Looker Studio, you could do a filter saying if the page like URL contains a certain element. So usually with a, a section of your website, it's usually a, a subdirectory. So you could say if the, the URL contains um, like for us, like the knowledge hub, you could just section it off that way. Um, within here, you can actually use um, the uh, in the expirations, you can use segments as well. So if I was looking at, um, I don't know why we've got one for page views. Oh yeah, source medium page view. So these segments elements, so you could say, I want to create a segment about the session. So in the session, um, people are visiting a certain area of the website, um, or you can add a filter in. So you can try using those, or you could say the filter at the bottom, of this list. So the filter is the page. If we add page URL, page location. So I'm just going to click page title because we don't haven't selected it there. And then we could say contains and then whatever URL bit it is in there. So it would only it would filter the report to only show those pages then. Okay, thanks, James. Um Antaripa Thakur has asked the question, can we create multiple reports, e.g. quarterly and annual, for the same dimension for different time periods? Yes. <laughs> so the, the, these reports here that, that sit in this section, when you navigate through it, whatever you choose in the right-hand side, this date range, as you move through the different reports, it will keep this date range. If you're in expirations, what you could do is you could create a, an expiration per quarter. So each quarter has your date, um, your date range. So you could set like this is quarter to date for this one, so April the first to twentieth, and then you could set a custom date range for another expiration. So if you create your first one initially, and then you can duplicate it and then change the date range, then you've got a historical list of your your old expirations at different quarters okay um we've still got a few people hanging on are you happy to answer a few more questions james are you are you we might as well just keep going keep going right jackie <laughs> friend can you build the same report by putting session source as your primary dimension yes yeah so just exactly the same as what we did there okay when we were creating those reports you just choose session source instead okay um Joe Nancaro, does the report only work, i.e. deliver results from the day you set it up, or can it draw out backdated info? So reporting-wise, it's historical. It's back, it goes back to whenever you set up the account. So anything in this, this bit, report section, is everything from you, when you set up the account. Expirations, some of the data in there, is more about different actions users have taken. So that one is um, it uses the um, the option you have in this. So in admin, in data settings, in data retention, whatever you have set this at will define how long it can keep the data in that. So the maximum you can go back with some of the expiration data is fourteen months. Um, this might, if you've not changed this setting, it will be two months. So you'll only be able to look at, say, like file download data. If it was on two months, I'd only be able to look at which files were downloaded in the last two months. And so that setting impacts the, the reports that we see in there and the data available. OK, hopefully that answered your question, Joe. Um, Anita Semple has asked, are there any settings I can set up to measure how many customers click on external links on our website? Uh, yeah, so external links, if we wanted to do that, we can do it in expirations. So much like what we've done before is we would create a new one, uh, external links. So this is something that's not available in the other report section. It's only available in expirations. External links, and I want to look at what links have been clicked. So in link, so I can look at the link URL. 
And I'm going to choose event name again. Did I do that? No, I didn't select event name. Event name. And my metrics is event counts, as always, unless you're looking at pages or different metrics that you want to look at. Um, so link URL, event count, and double clicking to move them across. And then my filters, I'm going to add event name. And remember, this one is called click. It's really unhelpful. It's called click, underscore. Uh, sorry, um, um, lowercase. Press apply. This then gives me, in the date range I selected there, what links people are going off to and what the most popular. So accessibility, top of the list. That's great to hear, isn't it? Well done, Roberta. OK. <laughs> great. OK. Um... Izzy Perks has asked, I've set up a standard event in Tag Manager, which appears to be working in Tag Manager according to their testing, but it isn't pulling through to GA4 despite the property being fully set up. Any advice? Okay. I think I've just lost, just lost it for the last bit there, Andy. Okay. Um, so Izzy has set up a standard event in Tag Manager, which appears to be working in Tag Manager according to their testing but it isn't pulling through to GA4 despite the property being fully set up. Do we have any advice? So one thing to check is using um, like the plugin that we have. So using this one, try doing it with the plugin. What the, the most likely is that the, the tag manager um, container hasn't been published out. So it hasn't been made live. So although you're doing the testing bits, because it's not been published live, it's not actually actively live and working. So if you use um, this plugin and then do the action on the website and see if it actually tracks on here um, and see if it's actually picking it up. So that's the first stop. If you want to go, uh, if you want handholding and help and just talk through it together, again, one-to-one -one support, we can work through it together. Okay, fantastic. Um, Katie Greenwood has asked, would you recommend turning on Google Signals? It depends. It depends if you need to know. If... Um, because we talked about earlier the thresholding issues that you sometimes get. Um, if you are seeing threshold, by the way, and um, I forgot to mention this earlier, um, you can. There is a setting within um, in the admin section. If you're seeing that thresholding issue in this option, there's one called uh, what's it called? Is it reporting identity? I always forget this one. Uh, yeah. So reporting identity. If we change this to device based. It actually helps. You'll probably see the full list of that threshold and kind of stop. So there isn't a way around it. So you can change this setting to then see the full data. So Google Signal does give you information about um, age, your their gender, and then their advertising interest. So it is useful data if you need to use it. Don't just turn it on for the sake of it. If you need to know that stuff about your users, then you can turn it on. The thing that I would say is that turning those things is it's using more invasive um, uh, cookie policies and uh, cookie um, tracking and things like that. So you will have to either make sure you're using a fully compliant um, cookie um, control or, you know, you're updating your policy to make sure people are really aware that that's happening. OK, hope that hopefully that was of use to you, Katie. If not, obviously get back in touch. Um, Misha Farlow, where can we see the parameters in the GA4 interface? Um, in the explorations. So in here, in Explore, parameters are dimensions. They are passed through as dimensions. So when we're creating a report, the, the, nice, uh, the nice name of it is a dimension. So the stuff that we saw, like file um, underscore name as a parameter, is available in here as file name. So the parameters pass data into these. These are all the standard stuff. If um, you want to pass custom um, parameters in, um, that stuff we're going to cover in the next webinar because you have to define it. You have to tell Google Analytics 4 that I've created a new parameter with a random name that you don't understand. I want you to present it in reports as this dimension. So that's a bit of the configuration that's needed if it's not appearing for you. Okay, so Misha, if, if that's still not clear, make sure you sign up for James's next webinar. Fiona Moore, I understand we'll no longer be able to use UA data after a certain period. Is that right? And if so, how concerned should we be about finding a way to store UA data for the future? Um, so you've got until the 1st of July 2024, so you've got a whole year. 
So don't worry, you've got it's still going to be accessible. Um, when it comes to exporting the data, you're not going to be able to export it and put it into GA4. So just treat them as completely separate um, um, products and, and packages. You can get that data out. The, the, it, you can just go through the reports and export them, like set the different years and export the data out. Um, what I've been looking at and, and using is the, um, the, the Google Sheets um, plugin. So this, this is an extension for Google Sheets. You link it up to your account. Um, and then it's available. Well, it's not loading, but it'll be in this list. It will appear there once it's loaded. But essentially what you do is you set the date range of the data that you want to export. You set the metrics that you want to pull out. And each of these columns are the different reports. So different date ranges or different types of data. When you run this, it's all done automatically. It'll pull the data out into another worksheet so you've got the data so depending on this is looking at source medium by date how many users so you've got a huge amount of data in there if you just want to look at top level how many users there were in the year you can do that uses you know individual users by date so you can pull that data out and this works quite well for that okay here's an interesting one for you james um from fiona booth is the debugger available in edge we had Chrome removed a while back by our IT department. I don't know, actually. I'm not sure. I just use it, <laughs> but I'm not sure. I don't know if it, I imagine there's a Firefox um, plugin version of it. Um, I'm yeah. not sure whether there is one for. There usually isn't when it comes to Edge and, and, and Internet Explorer. Okay. Another one from Jackie Friend. Could you explain, please, how you track bookings if Spectrix is integrated into your website? Um. So the setup, there is an article on a website, which is all about setting everything up. So it's, it is using Tag Manager on your website and the um, Spectric side, and it's passing data into the same Google Analytics 4 account. And there is a, a recipe that's been provided uh, within um, that article that you can just install into Tag Manager. It will then pass the e-commerce data into Analytics 4. Okay. Um, Mark Tradwell has asked, the thank you page that you mentioned in the presentation, is there any way to stop it being searchable if an event is counting page visits, finding it via Google would skew those results? I guess they could put a no follow in place, couldn't they? Oh, uh, sorry, I lost you a couple of times then. Um, OK, so Mark Tradwell has asked, the thank you page, is there a way to stop it being searchable? I think he's talking about organic search. Oh, I see. Yeah. If an yeah. event is counting page vi visits, finding it via Google, would skew those results so you could put an a no, no follow instruction to google i guess there yeah so as andy says you could uh, there is something called a ht access file that's available which is part of your website setup and you can define it to not um uh track certain pages usually when it comes to thank you pages google can't get to it because it has to fill out a form and because it's a robot it can't get past the form so it will never usually see it unless it's been available through a menu item or something like that, you're not really going to get there. So it's not usually an issue. OK, um, there's a couple of others about percentages, which I think we've covered. Sierra Walker, are there any benchmarks for engagement rates? Um, no, because everybody is different. <laughs> Essentially, it's the answer. <laughs> Every single website is different. Uh, you're not going to be pressed on this, are you? No, it's not happening. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> there's no benchmarks. <laughs> OK. Um, would you use Looker Studio? This is from Angela. I don't have a surname. Would you use Looker Studio for what we used dashboards for, or is there any way to create dashboards in GA4? Um, sorry, I just lost you a couple of times there, Andy. Sorry. Okay, so this is Looker from Studio. Angela. Yeah. Would you would you use Looker Studio for what we used dashboards for, or is there a way to create dashboards in GA4? Um, I mean, yes is the answer, really. The short answer is yes. Looker Studio is really powerful um, and it's shareable. That's the, that's the one thing that's really frustrating with GA4 at the moment is that there's certain elements of it that you just can't share with other people. Um, so using Looker Studio means that you can email people, you can set and schedule an email, you can share it, and they, they can't access the data. They can just see the, the results, which is really good. Um, the dashboards... The, the way around it is using like the overview um, reports that are available. So we've created some detail reports, but you could create that, um, the overview ones in here. These are called detail ones. 
But in the library, you're able to create overview reports which have some of the information from the detail in it. So you can choose what is it, it, what data can come up into that. So that might be a way around it. But again, it's limited the functionality in here about how you might want to present it. It's not as nice as what the old dashboards used to used to have in Universal Analytics. Okay, um, Angela, if that hasn't answered your question, a link is in the chat to uh, to arrange a one to one with James, so you can go into that in a bit more detail if you need to. Phil Darnett, won't your explorations disappear after fourteen months? No, the expiration itself will stay in the, the in the list. So if I click this, if I um, look at file downloads, but this expiration itself won't disappear. So the configuration bits will disappear. The data within the date range will disappear. So if I hit the range here and I go back into a custom date, like way back, you'll see that from April 2022, because we didn't change our settings until then, we can only go back to April 2022. I can't even go back 14 months because we um, didn't change that in the account for Digital Culture Network before April last year. So that's the earliest I can get that data. Okay, cool. Um, the number of participants is dropping, so I suggest we make yeah. this one final. <laughs> Thanks, question. everybody, for staying with us, and thank you for all the lovely messages of everybody heading off. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, one final this question easy. from Neville. I suspect he may not be in our sector, but I'm not sure. Um, where can I access all of the resources associated with today's webinar, please? Um, so you're going to get an email, and it's going to have a recording of this whole webinar. Um, so you can look back at the different stages, and then there's going to be a, um, a link to an article on the website, which is going to have the webinar uh, embedded as a YouTube video, and underneath that will be extra stuff that I'm going to add in. So some of the things that we've talked about today and some of the, the places that I'd like to send you to for extra, extra support. Okay, fantastic. So I think those are all the questions. Apologies if I've missed one or two. Um, as James explained, if you're if you're attending today, you will receive uh, an email with resources, lots of great stuff related to the webinar. And obviously, as, as we've pointed out, you can create a one-to-one -one call with James. Um, so yeah, to, to, to go into any of your challenges in more in more detail. There we go. That's it, extra stuff on the website. Please come up. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, it's been uh, the biggest Q&A I've ever done. So uh, thanks for sticking around, those that have.